imagine you're sitting on the couch and watching TV, and you decide to get up, and the next thing you know, you're laying on the floor, not knowing how you got there. Um, this has happened to my grandma on numerous occasions. Um, she suffers from a condition known as orthostatic hypotension. For the past two years or so, my grandma has passed out when, when trying to stand many times, and I wanted to know a little bit more about this condition that causes her to potentially put her life in danger. So this past week, I have been researching orthostatic hypotension so I could become more knowledgeable about her condition. I know most of us have grandparents or even parents who aren't in like the healthiest state right now, and some of you may even know someone who suffers from the symptoms of this condition, but they don't know what's wrong with them. So I wanted to inform you all about this condition. Today I will be explaining what orthostatic hypotension is, some of the symptoms of this condition, how this condition is diagnosed, and how it can be treated. First, I'm going to explain exactly what orthostatic hypotension is. According to the Cleveland <coughs> Clinic, orthostatic hypotension is a condition in which your blood pressure falls substantially when you try to stand up quickly. Inside your body, there is a network of blood vessels consisting of arteries, capillaries, and veins, and the heart pumps the the heart pumps the blood into the arteries, which carries the blood throughout the body. And the change of position causes a reduction of blood, fl blood flow, which causes a shortage of oxygen to the brain. This picture, it's just showing the heart and the arteries that go to the brain. And when you stand up, the blood doesn't flow through them properly, so it causes you to pass out. And uh, this is why when my grandma stands up, she occasionally faints because there's not enough oxygen, <laughs> oxygen getting to her brain fast enough. Um, now that you all know exactly what orthostatic hypotension is, I will go over some of the common symptoms of this condition. According to medicinenet.com, there are many symptoms of this condition, but the main one is feeling lightheaded and dizzy when you, when you stand up. Um, this is because of the insufficient blood flow to the brain. According, er, well, another major symptom of orthostatic hypotension is blacking out. Um, people may black out if they stand up too quickly because of the lack of oxygen. Um, some of the other symptoms for this condition are nausea, blurred vision, chest pains, and disorientation or confusion. The best way to clear up these symptoms would be to sit down or lay down for a couple minutes and then they're supposed to go away, but then when you stand up, probably will come back, so I don't know. But, um, now that I've gone over some of the symptoms of this condition, now I will discuss how this condition is diagnosed. There are numerous tests that your doctor can run on you to see if you have orthostatic hypotension. Uh, one of the many ways in which your doctor can see if you have this condition is by a simple blood test to check for diabetes. Another way your doctor can test to see if you have this condition is by the Salva maneuver, which is when you take in several deep breaths while the doctor checks your blood pressure and your heart rate. Your, um, your doctor can also do a tilt table test, and during this test, you lie on the table that moves from a horizontal, a horizontal position to an upright position, and this test is used to see if the patient faints when the table is moved. Just showing the laying down when you go up if you faint and you suffer from it, I guess. Um, <coughs> and then lastly, I would like to go over some of the treatment options for orthostatic hypotension. If you're if you experience episodes of this condition, the doctor will first try to determine if you have another disease or condition that is causing it. And if this is the case, then treating the, the disease that is causing the orthostatic hypotension will usually cure it. And another way to treat this condition is if you're taking medication that is causing it, your doctor will just adjust your prescription or change it to a different one. And one of the most common ways to treat this is by making changes in your daily life. Some of the changes would be avoiding or limiting alcohol, uh, standing up slowly when getting out of a chair, avoiding prolonged standing, or raising the head the head of your bed like when you're sleeping or laying down in it. Um, so today I've, I've talked about what orthostatic hypotension is, some of the symptoms of it, how it is diagnosed, and how to treat this condition. 
I hope all of you understand what this condition is now and, and what some of the symptoms to look for in case you know someone who is suffering from it. Now that I know a little bit more about what my grandma has and her condition, I'll be able to help her and watch for signs of fainting which could possibly hurt her. Thank you. So, Paulina, what did you think? Um, her taste is clear, and I like how she, um, her transitions were all clear, and it made me understand her topic more with all these samples that she had. And then her clip, her conclusion, and it brought it back up to the I thought that the um, opening section was fine. You give us good justification. Your thesis statement's very broad, and I think you could use a little bit more focus there, but there's a very good uh, structure that you set up. The content material on the first point needs a little bit more explanation. You've got a visual that you use, but it goes by so quickly that I'm not quite sure that uh, I understand what exactly it is that you were talking about. Later on, I thought things were a little bit clearer, um, but I'm still, because that uh, first section is so fundamental to explaining what the uh, illness consists of, I think you need to spend a little bit more time on that. And a few more uh, examples or stories to go along with it I think will uh, draw us in. Uh, maybe even a reference back to some of the problems that your grandmother has faced. I thought that that was a good way to start the speech and that it would make sense to maybe make some references internally uh, to the same situation. I thought you did a pretty good job citing material, especially on the second point. Um, let me see. Uh, like I said, the second visual worked pretty well. Organizationally, it's very easy to follow. However, it is, it, it's really mechanical. I mean, you, 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 ha you know what you're supposed to be doing. You've got the structure there. And it's just one of those things. Whenever people learn a new skill, they often do it in that kind of mechanical process. You, you go through it. You don't get quite comfortable with it. It's, I give you guys the example about smog when you're learning to drive. I use that as an example. You, know, you signal, check your mirror over your shoulder, go in safe. And when, when people first learn to do that, they go. <laughs> and, it, it, and it feels like you're going through each step of the process. Yeah. And that's kind of the way it feels. Your transitions are clear, but they ought to be a little more natural. They should be relaxed. And uh, so you need to get some language there that's going to fix those problems. Otherwise, uh, structurally, everything's good. The content was fine. The subject matter is fine. It's a little brief, and that's why I think you could use a few more stories and narratives in there, maybe some quotes from doctors or patients who've had these kinds of problems, talk about what some of the problems are to make it more interesting from a, a human perspective as opposed to just a technical perspective. All right, thank you.